Do you ever wonder how people get elected? And in just a couple years, some of those same people are worth over millions of dollars. Now, before all the political haters start commenting, this is going to be a non-partisan video, and I'm going to cover Republicans as well as Democrats, just to be fair. The idea for this video came back in 2020 when Senator Richard Burr from my home state of North Carolina made headlines with the New York Times when he sold stock worth up to $1.7 million before COVID-19 gained major attention in the United States. At the time, he was a chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Now, Senator Richard Burr was alone. There were several other prominent senators that did the exact same thing. But the big question was, did he have some inside knowledge or was it just solid investing? But it goes back before 2020 with COVID-19. Even goes back to some articles back in 2008 when New York Senator Gillibrand's husband completed over 250 transactions at the height of the mortgage crisis. He made dozens of risky investments in home building stocks using put options, which let him take advantage of the falling real estate prices. The truth is, most people elected to Congress are already well off financially, and some are even insanely rich. Not many poor people get elected to Congress. But there's always this lingering question, how do they turn what they already had into multi-million dollars worth of profit? Is it insider knowledge, or is it just pure good luck or solid investing? According to an article in the New York Post, Mr. Alan Zabrowski who analyzed thousands of stock transactions of lawmakers over the past several years, had this to say, Senators beat the market with their investments by an average of 12%, and members of the House of Representatives beat the average stock returns by 6%. I'll be honest with you, I want the same type of returns and the same type of averages as those people. So, in order to do that, I started to follow the money. Sites like House Stock Watcher are a good source of information to get a basic understanding of who is buying what. The catch is, members of Congress have up to 45 days to report their transactions to the public, which we all know a 45-day window is an eternity and a lot can happen within the stock market in 45 days. When you first pull up the site, House Stock Watcher, it's going to give you a daily summary for the last day with transactions. And in this case, is October 21st, of this year, and Mr. Austin Scott out of Georgia was the person who they listed. But if you look to the left of the screen, you can click on the date of which day you're interested, or go by summary by representative, by ticker, or actually breaks down by the state. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna do summary by representative. And since Ms. Pelosi is very well known, she's been in Congress a very long time, and she's actually one of the top 10 richest members of Congress, we're gonna use her for example. So we just enter her name by Pelosi and some pull up the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, a Democrat for the California 12th Congressional District. So when we click on her, it's gonna give several different uh, information of data here. It's gonna give you the type of transaction she's uh, involved with, where it's technology, finance, whatever case may be. Is she purchasing stock? Is she selling stock? All different kind of options here. It's gonna give you a good overview. And if you scroll on down, it's gonna give you representative transaction activity by each quarter. As we see on the screen, it's got quarter one of 2020 all the way through quarter three of 2021. To the right, it's gonna give you the top 10 traded tickers by volume. Of course, the most volume she had was with Apple, all the way down to PayPal at the very bottom. And if you continue to scroll down, it doesn't really separate by newest to oldest. So you have to kind of sort through all the information if there's a lot of transactions in order to see which date you're looking at. In this case, the most recent date I could find was July 23rd of 2021, where she purchased a lot of share of NVDA, which is a well-known graphics or chip card manufacturer. If we click on the date of July 23rd, 2021, it pulls up this little bit of information, which has a disclosure link to her website. And the amount range is anywhere from 500,000 to $1 million. And in the description, it says she purchased NVDA of a total of 5,000 shares of that particular stock for that transaction. Now, if the stock purchase of that 5,000 shares of NVDA on July 23rd, 2021 was accurate, we look at that stock price at that time, which at that time, it was trading around 
and 53 cents per share. Compare that to what it's trading at now, which is $227.26 at the time of this video. If she was to sell those shares at the current price right now, she would, just for that transaction alone, she would profit over $158,000. Which to her probably doesn't mean much of anything because again, she is one of the top 10 most richest members of Congress. According to yahoo.com, she is worth around $120 million, but it should be noted that her husband is a venture capitalist and has been a real estate investor for many, many years. Of course, just because a politician buys stock or sells stock or vet does any type of investment trading, it doesn't mean they're part of this secret squirrel corruption ring. But the one thing is true when it comes to politicians and money is they typically do not lose money when they invest. Information is king. A groundbreaking 2004 study by a group of professors and researchers examined the records of U.S. Senators between 1993 and 1998. The study found that a portfolio tracking the stocks that the U.S. Senators bought during the same time period outperformed the market by 85 basis points each month, and a portfolio that tracked the stocks that the Senators sold during the period lagged behind the market by 12 basis points. The study concluded that the Senators knew appropriate times to both buy and sell their common stocks. Either they're geniuses at trading on the stock market or they had some inside information that we did not have. So having an insight to how they're balancing their portfolio, what they're adding, what they're taking away, gives us um, a better understanding of what they're doing. And if we mimic that, there is the chance, there's a lot of talk on Reddit and all these TikTok videos that if you mimic what they're doing, chances are you're gonna see somewhat of a close return in profits as they're seeing. Now, of course, that's all debatable because then again, if they're buying something and they're not reported for 45 days, the chances are of you jumping on those same type of returns, obviously there's going to have some uh, error of margin involved with that. Now, sites like House Stock Watcher is not the only site open to the public where you can get a better insight of what they're doing. If you want to follow senators, there's the Senate Stock Watcher. There's also a website called OpenSecrets.org, which has a vast amount of information coming to that. And there's probably... 10 to 20 different other websites. These are just kind of top three that I've looked at here recently. And I've started playing around with to see if my portfolio can almost mimic theirs in a way in order to maximize my profit. As always guys, short and sweet to the point. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel and we'll see you on the next one later.